The first question that I saw on the Path of Exile 2 subreddit is, when you said, I'm going to do an interview with Josh Strive Hayes, everyone responded, who is Josh Strive Hayes? People want to see and hear about new content and not have yet another interview with a total random guy unrelated to Path of Exile. That is a fair point, Path of Exile forums. So, I love video games in general. I've made a lot of my career reviewing and critiquing MMORPGs, and while I wouldn't necessarily class Path of Exile as an MMORPG, I would class it as an online RPG that can be played with other people, and I enjoy doing that. So, I am just a guy that makes videos, and I've been doing that for many years. Jonathan, why should people care that you are making Path of Exile 2? What do you bring to the table? Boast about yourself, Jonathan. That's a hard one, honestly, because I think um, I've always just had a, this the opinion of myself that I'm just some random guy. Like, I honestly, uh, in fact, it's kind of scary to think, but as I look around the office, that I'm one of the people who is the most experienced in here, in this room at this point. Um, I've always sort of felt myself being the kind of the random youngster who kind of, you know, has just managed to somehow get a job working in game development. Um, and so, yes, it, it's very weird to kind of have this strange, like, oh, suddenly I'm looking around, I'm like, oh, crap, I'm I'm actually experienced and I'm supposed to know what I'm doing at this point. Um, mm. So, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, I actually have some idea. But I think that um, probably one of the main skills that I have and one of the main skills that I think any good game designer needs to have is actually just an eye to know when things are wrong. And this is a a uh, a thing that is one of the hardest skills to develop and one of the most important skills to develop because um, if you can see what's wrong, um, then you can take stuff that other people have made and make it good. Um, and I think that that's actually uh, really, really important just by removing all the bad. Um, and so that's a uh, quite, 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 a, quite an important thing. But uh, one uh, kind of horrible thing about it is that it means that when you play every other game, um, if your sense for brokenness is tuned to an absolute peak, uh, it can make the experience rather unpleasant because all you see is the jank. Uh, and all I'm looking through when I'm playing things is just how horrible this is. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, I think, probably where one of my main skills is just uh, seeing when things are bad and then saying, okay, like we need to fix this problem. Um, and it honestly, it, it seems like a simple thing, but it is quite a surprisingly difficult thing to uh, get a skill for. So when this project was started, they all looked around and said, we're about to make one of the most ambitious, potentially largest <laughs> ARPGs on the market. Who can we, you know, task with this incredible responsibility? And then someone just went, Jonathan's got an eye for making store, you know, it, stuff isn't shit. He, he'll be, be okay with it. He's free for the next couple of years. Throw him on it. And you just kind of ended up there. And now you're guiding a team to make this game. What's it like going from seeing yourself as just the kind of kid in the corner to the guy that's now responsible for a game that hundreds of thousands of people are pretty hyped for? No pressure, Jonathan, but it's all on you. It is very scary. And I think... Um... It's also very scary because, uh, you know, there's this whole sort of legacy of POE that we have to make sure is respected as well as something like that. But at the same time, I tend to be this kind of person who's just like, if things aren't working, I'm kind of like, this is crap. We need to do something about it, regardless of how hard it might be, regardless of how important um, that people might think the current way it works is. We need to be able to do something about that. And so... Um, that kind of means that you get into these like moments that are quite uh yeah like mm. difficult with the uh, with, with 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 team members and, and all sorts of stuff but also then worrying with the community right what's the community going to think of this when we talk about how this works um so like that can be really really concerning and yeah i think um with, with poe2 like uh the hope is, of course, that you announce some stuff and it's just like, you know, oh, everyone just loves immediately everything you're doing. But because we're mostly talking at this point to an existing community of POE 1 players, there's a large amount of skepticism from some of them about the kind of changes they make. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, that we're making. And so I think that um, we did like an event recently. And um, I think that the people who played the game did mostly get a pretty good, like, favorable impression of the kind of thing that we're doing. But it's certainly the case that if you just tell people, um, you know, like, here's the kind of changes we have to make to make the game good, they don't necessarily sound like the kind of things that a POE 1 player immediately is like, oh, yeah, that's the great thing. I mean, we, we can obviously present certain features, right? We can do that kind of thing. But it's yeah. like the, the, the big, the big kind of, like, thing that everyone's like, oh, you're slowing the game down. That's, like, a huge thing that people, that people often uh, talk about. Um, and, uh, you know, so that, that's the kind of stuff that like, 
making these kinds of decisions is 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 is, is tough. Um, so I feel like I sort of went slightly off topic there. But either way, the oh, that's no, kind of the, do the a lot of off topic stuff. I've got questions yeah, that will just sure. go rambling sure. because for everyone yeah. in the chat, by the way, there's a couple of uh, there's about one and a half thousand people so far just joining us to have this chat. Jonathan is responsible for guiding the kind of game development of Path of Exile Two. Mm -hmm. I very much enjoy Path of Exile One, and we both enjoy gaming systems. So we're going to be talking about lots of different things. But as I said earlier, Jonathan has already done a lot of these interviews with players and content creators who are far more knowledgeable about the game than I am. So I need to ask more general questions because I tend to come at things from the kind of perspective of the, the casual player, the everyman, if you will. The guy that just about scrapes by killing Katava after dying seven or eight times and running back in. And don't worry, we'll get to things like Righteous Fire and Detonate Dead later. There's a, there's a question on that. So the first question of who are we has now been pretty much established. I'm just a guy that plays games, and I love the fact the chat has said, you have the energy of a guy that didn't know he was going for a job interview, wandered into the kind of game development room, and now you're in charge. <laughs> and you just haven't corrected anyone yet. You've just gone with it and you've been like, okay, we're here now. Let's just make a game. <laughs> I like that. It's a pretty good. Um, deal. That's, that's know, good. I, did, I, I actually did want to be a game developer even when I was a kid. Like I really did. It's funny because like, it is actually not a job I uh, randomly uh, uh, walked into. I did. You know, it's funny. Even when I was ten years old, I knew I wanted to be a game developer. Hmm. Um, it's one of those things that. Um, like uh, at that point i kind of actually lost all interest in pretty much any other subject of school or anything else like that and i was just like you know what i'm being a game developer i don't need to care about all of this other you know random stuff in school I'm just, this is this is what i'm doing um so it was kind of always one of those things and to me it was all about like where am i going to find that opportunity um and chris uh i you know i met um when i was probably about how old would i have been 13 something like that um and uh he uh was also someone who was very interested in game development um, so I kind of just latched onto him. Um, he was actually a bit older than I was. Um, and then at the point where uh, he was uh, getting to the point where he thought he, we could maybe start a game studio, I was kind of already there, uh, <laughs> you know, You're being friends finally, with him. Finally, Chris, like, you know, good what, idea, I really let's do it. I need to be, yes, yeah. I need to be part of that. And so um, the initial, like the start of, of, of our company, um, like Chris was very much the one who uh, had the vision of what it was that we were going to make, and I just wanted, I just knew that I wanted to be a game developer. Like that was my thing. I just, I, I just knew that I, that, that was my one shining star. Is that is what I'm going to do with my life? Um, and so, uh, and and as I said, Chris was the one who was like, you know, here's a game that we can make that's going to be extremely successful. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I, 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 I mean, certainly I am a big fan of Diablo too. But if you were to get ask me what my favorite games were um, mm. at that time, it wasn't at the top of the list, surprisingly. What was? Um, uh, probably Half-Life at the time. Choice. Uh, I would say, or maybe StarCraft. Uh, I mean, Again, these are just like choice. late 90s bangers, right? Like, you know, they're just, just mm. the, the games that everyone um, that everyone loved. But like those are two. I mean, Final Fantasy VII as well, probably. But yeah, I mean, we're talking about like those, those three, I would say, from my childhood. I that, mean, the reason I've got Strife as a kind of middle pseudonym is because I loved right, Cloud right. Strife so much in the Final Fantasy VII game. That's where it came right, from. Right. I absolutely adored that. And we're going to get onto right. a question later about what childhood games have kind of inspired choices that you've made in game development, whether it's a good choice or a bad choice specifically. But uh, there's a really important question in the chat right now that we need to address is, mm -hmm. what is on your shirt? Because people are loving the design oh. on the front of it. Right, it's a uh, t-shirt that was actually designed by one of the Path of Exile uh, community. Okay. Um, so uh, based on the map, um, Whakawai Rautaro. And basically the, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's just a, but it's, it's obviously we have like various sort of uh, Maori uh, design in the game quite a lot. And um, so the t-shirt just is kind of like of, of that nature. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. It's actually my favorite t-shirt, um, but it was designed by one of the fans of Pee Wee One. I think we had a competition or something like that. Uh, and it was, um, I think it was uh, for sale at ExileCon uh, or, something, I, I, or something like that. I don't know. I actually, like, my wardrobe at this point pretty much consists entirely of Path of Exile t-shirts. Um, I have literally <laughs> hundreds of them and uh, literally nothing else. So uh, <laughs> every day I just pick another one up. At the, the next convention, we just see you scavenging around all of the boxes of shirts. Be like, this will do me for the year. This will hold me. Right. Yeah, I mean, my wardrobe just looks like that scene out of Dragon Ball Z. It, it's literally just hanging up white shirts and waistcoats. It's the same right. outfit repeatedly. So I totally get that. Right. We've gone through one question. We've been here 15 minutes. It's going good. We've got a, quite a few left to go. 